let's cover attaching our clothing to the character's rig. So here we are using a Manuel Bastion character, and we have the rig, gyrating, whatever. So you'll notice, hey, where's the cloth weaver panel? Oh no, it's not broken, don't worry. We're currently in pose mode, so we want to switch to object mode, and now we have our panel visible. Let's bring over one of our clothes. Let's see, this one here. And I found that in some instances, when attaching clothes to rigs, it might offset it a little. So that's why here it is offset on the character. You'll see when I attach clothing to the rig. So here's the procedure. Okay, in the rigging tab, what we want to do is define the clothing so we have our clothing selected, hit define clothing. And now it's base three, is what it's titled up here. And let's select the character rig. So right now the rig is in object mode, which is what we need. Define armature, MK skeleton. And now go ahead and select the clothing again and hit attach cloth to armature. And okay, now it reset the position. I, kind of odd. Some rigs do this. Now, if we go to animate the rig, you'll see yes, the clothing follows. So, here are a few pointers. At the moment, we have our armature at the very top, that's what we need. And following, we have the cloth simulation then our solidify to give it some thickness, and then our subdivision. And sometimes you'll want to play around with where you position the subdivision. For example, our animation is going to move into this pose. And when you have the clothing, you'll want to start it off in a, in a T pose or an A pose, and then give it a few seconds to settle. Goes here, it's settling. You can always export the rig and the clothing back to your original program and then animate there if you choose. Okay, so as this is calculating, you can go to the clothing tab and bake the animation. That way, it'll calculate faster without the preview. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause it. Pause it, I said. And see how it kind of looks. Not, not too bad, actually. Let's go ahead and bake the animation. We're going to hit current cache to bake. And what I want to do now is go ahead and copy the clothing, go to the first frame, shift D to duplicate. And I'm just going to move the clothing to another layer, and then go ahead and turn off the cloth modifier on that. So we can see the difference. Okay. Here's without modifier. You can see the clothing is following the body, which is not, you know, that's not natural. You need gravity in there. And here we have, okay, so that's where the cache baked to. Okay, so that compared to that, you know, this one's going to be more natural. Now let's do one final test. Let's duplicate this one more time. Go ahead and delete that one. Go back here, duplicate, move it back down to that layer. Okay, now this time what I'm going to do 
is move the subsurface up above the clothing, but below the rig, the armature, and play through here to frame, what, 51? Okay. And we'll see, we get more detail this time. It's gonna take longer, whoa, what in the world? What happened? <laughs> okay, here's what we need to do. We need to adjust any one of these parameters so that way it clears the cache fully. Because if you, you don't want to free all your bakes or that will undo what we did before. And we're gonna then bake this once it is complete up to frame 51 and compare it with the lower resolution. Okay, so let's, let's do a comparison. Here's before. After you can see it's closer to the character, not as much. Yeah, see, we're getting this little crease through here, and yeah, it's not as bad on that one. So, increasing the resolution and then having it bake. So, if I play this. And play this one here. Yeah, you can see there, definitely a lot more detail. Here we're getting a lot more detail. And then you can add another subsurf on top of that to make it even finer and let that render that way. That way it looks even, even sharper. Yeah, more natural that way. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, what if we wanted to have layers of clothing? How does that work? Well, first, what is actually going to be visible in our scene? So here we have the tank top. Is it necessary for him to have sleeves on this? Well, usually you, you might wear sleeves underneath, but is it actually going to be visible? Probably not, so not worth modeling and then taking the time to calculate those simulations. Just make it easy on yourself. Yeah. Now, if you want to be hyper-realistic, then sure. But for this example, I don't have a clothing modifier. On the underclothing, you'll want to apply a collision to it as well. Add collision to character, which is the shirt, you know? And then this over top will interact with that. Do the most under layer first and then work your way out. And then you'll result in something like this. I hope you were able to get some use out of this and I'll see you in the next tutorial.